Welcome to Van Wyck Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. I am Reverend Carson Overstreet and it truly is a joy and a privilege to serve as pastor here in this beloved community of faith. I'd like to invite our guests in worship and also those who will be worshiping with us online today. And I hope that each one of us gathered, whether we are here together or whether we are at home, will be united together as one body um, by the Holy Spirit and that we might feel God's near and beautiful presence. I would like to share with you a few bulletin announcements uh, for us to plug into the life of faith here. Today is a big day on the calendar. It is Super Bowl Sunday. Who's excited? Nobody. <laughs> but in the life of the church, we also celebrate Super Bowl of Caring, S-O-U-P-E-R. And Super Bowl of Caring began in 1990 as a Presbyterian pastor was sitting at home with many friends um, eating all of this wonderful food, which you would not believe how much food is consumed on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, but as he saw the two teams play, he thought, wow, there are so many who could benefit um, from the generosity of many who do not even have a bowl of soup to eat. And so since 1990, it has um, spread across denominational lines into places of business and billions of dollars have been collected every year for local food pantries so that we might assist our sisters and brothers who don't even have enough resources for a bowl of soup to eat. So today I ask for your generosity um, even as the, um, let me see, the Kansas City Chiefs, even though they are going to be driving the football against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we are going to be at work to drive out hunger in Lancaster County. So you're invited to drop in um, a financial gift, a check or cash into our Super Bowl of carrying pots. There's one here at the communion table. There's one upon leaving the sanctuary or you're welcome to mail in um, a check. <coughs> designated for Super Bowl of Caring to the church post office box. And also our youth will be collecting pantry items this afternoon here at the church in a contactless drive through from two o'clock to four o'clock as we still collect um, pantry items for Hope Food Pantry, peanut butter, jelly, juice, canned chicken, and canned fruit. So we thank you for supporting this important ministry. Also, on Sunday, February the 14th, we will be gathering our children's um, Sunday study group, ages kindergarten through fifth grade, <coughs> excuse me, from 3 o'clock to 4.30. Um, no matter what the weather is, if it's raining, we'll have to do this another day. Um, but we are going to be gathering together for a Valentine theme scavenger hunt. So I hope all of our young ones can come out and play. Maybe it'll be playing in the snow. We'll see. Before we um, begin worship, let us claim a few moments to be still in God's presence. Lord God, your spirit has gathered us as one body today to do nothing less than praise you. So may our worship give glory to you, O oh God. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. You can follow along with the worship bulletin on our church website, vwpc.org, under the worship tab. But please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. The Lord builds up the people of God and gathers the outcasts. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord determines the number of the stars. He gives to them all their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. 
Let us worship God. As we, call our two, as we call ourselves into confession, we remember that we fool ourselves if we think that our ways are hidden from God. Therefore, let us confess our sin, trusting in the mercy of God our Maker. <coughs> Excuse me. Let us pray. Excuse me. I offer this prayer of confession for you and for me. God, you are everlasting, the creator of all that is. Your understanding is beyond measure. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. Hear our silent prayers of confession. <coughs> In your compassion, O oh Lord, forgive us, for we place our hope in your steadfast love. Amen. Friends, receive the assurance of pardon. Praise the Lord. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. God takes pleasure in those who place their trust in God's grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today, I wanted to create some space for our children's message. <coughs> if this cough will leave me alone. Our Christian education team, <coughs> excuse me, is looking for ways to nurture our children outdoors in these coming months, intersecting faith and scripture and nature. And so I wanted to share with you a beautiful story that's written by Jerome, Jerome Berryman called Silence. Jerome says, I walked between two trees it was like a door. A path appeared on the forest floor, and so I took a step. It was quiet. No trains or cars or trucks or airplanes or loud talk. None of that hurt my ears. I took another step. It was still. No breeze, leaves, squirrels, trees, birds, or worms moved. I took one more step and then I stopped. There was something on the path. A box blocked the path. It was old like dirt and rocks. And, cur and a curving S was cut into the lid. It hushed me through and through. I knelt down and opened the box, but there was nothing inside to see or hear, touch or taste or smell. Something else was there. I took away the sides and I put them by the path and I took away the bottom and put it on the grass. Now only what was left was there to know. 
It moved, so I moved too, crawling on my hands and knees until it stopped once more. And I lay down to wonder, and I came so close that we smiled, the same smile. It was so wide, we went inside. What has no outside? And all began to fade. Even my words wandered away. Where they went, I do not know. Everything faded. <clears throat> when my words came back, they were alive with the light of the first day. Now I could see something new and I knew how to say it. As I walked back along the path, the feeling grew that God was there, like air to breathe. It was odd, but I knew what I knew. I wonder what silence could really be. I wonder where it comes from. I wonder where it goes. I wonder if it is big or small. I wonder if it's old or always new. I wonder where you are in silence. I wonder where silence is in you. I wonder what has no outside. I loved this book. I love this book because it reminds me of the ways that we encounter God outdoors. And the psalmist tells us to be still and to know I am God. To know God is a mystery. And our children have so much to teach us, especially when, when we are outdoors in the silence, to be still in God's presence. Something holy happens and we listen. So I invite our young children and also our big kids here to think about where that silence is in you. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for the gift of silence. Thank you for storybooks and imaginations. And thank you for children who lead us into the big outdoors to lay upon the green grass to imagine who you are and where you go and what silence feels like with you beside us. Continue to reveal yourself to each of us that we may truly become like a child. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Our... Um, our scripture reading today, um, our assigned scripture reading for the Old Testament comes from Isaiah 40. And I would like to invite you to listen uh, for God's word to you and me today uh, from the prophet Isaiah 40, verses 25 through 31. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. Who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? And my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In our assigned New Testament reading, it continues in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. And again, I invite you to listen for God's word to you and me today. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon Peter and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon Peter's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came, and he took her by the hand, and he lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up, and he went to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon Peter and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to Jesus, everyone is searching for you. And Jesus answered, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus' very first day of ministry was very, very long. He was ready to respond to God's plan of salvation, and he did it by setting the tone. He claimed God's purposes for his life and his ministry. Jesus began choosing his first disciples to teach them the wonders of God's love and the ways of it. And he started teaching the importance of our connection and our unity to God and one another. <clears throat> and then Jesus began to demonstrate how important creating spaces of grace are to experience God-given unity and connection. And going into families, Peter, and, and going into the family of Peter's home, Jesus took the hand of Peter's mother-in-law, and he lifted her up, and re he restored her to new life. Jesus spent the rest of the evening standing in that space of grace, healing the masses who crowded outside of, fam of Peter's family's home. And when the sun set. It sat on a rather long day as the disciples were just amazed at watching the unforced rhythms of Jesus' grace. Mark tells us that before the sun crested upon that next day, that Jesus went to a deserted place because he too needed to sit in a space of grace. I can imagine Jesus lifting his eyes up to behold and praise the creator of the universe and the maker of humankind. Jesus must have marveled at the one who calls the stars by name. In prayer, Jesus sat at the very feet of God to learn from the one who is great in strength and mighty in power. And Jesus prayed for God's will to be done, 
so that he may join the Lord to restore the faint and heal the brokenhearted and strengthen the powerless. It amazes me that Jesus, who is fully human but also fully divine, that he needed his own soul to be still and know the great I am. The unforced rhythms of Jesus' grace, they came from his daily need to physically and spiritually connect to the giver of life, God the Father Almighty. And no matter how many people were searching for Jesus, no matter how much work there would be to do over those next three years, Jesus did something amazing on that second day of ministry. He set a personal boundary as his ministry began. Jesus set aside chronological time in order for his spirit to be lifted up into God's life-giving time. This past week, I was sitting in a doctor's office waiting for the attending physician to come. It was really early in the morning, and I was very tired. I actually overslept, which I rarely do, and so I threw my clothes on and I ran out the door and drove to Rock Hill. I didn't even have a chance to make some tea or coffee. So I was still very groggy. <laughs> Soon after watching the seconds pass on my watch, that doctor walked in and she closed the door. And her 30-something-year-old eyes, they just smiled behind her medical face mask. Don't you miss the smiles? <laughs> but I could see it. And every step that she took exuded joy and energy and purpose. This was like 8 in the morning. And without even thinking, I'm sitting in the chair and I say, I want what you had this morning. And she was logging on her computer and she just looked at me. And she said, you want what I had? Well, I don't drink coffee. But every day that I wake up above ground is a good day. And that's what I had. I know I'm not supposed to talk about things like this, but I get up every morning before the sun rises. I'm just a morning person, and my husband laughs at me because he cannot make me sleep in on any given morning. But I get up early to dive into God's Word, and I read my devotional. Actually, I have two of them. And I read and I pray and I sit and I watch the sunrise and I celebrate that God has given me another day. <coughs> she said, I may not even be here tomorrow. So I'm going to celebrate every day that I have and live my life with God's purpose. Whatever is weighing on my heart, I give it to God and I claim his power in my life. That's what I have every morning. And I said, whoa. <laughs> I just sat there and I thought, best doctor visit ever. <laughs> but the good doctor's testimony actually took me back to one particular morning of my life a few months ago. This past December, God nudged me to take my very first silent retreat after about 10 years of ministry, which is kind of sad. But God nudged me to carve out two and a half days to go on a silent retreat. And I was walking on this one particular morning with intentional slowness along a prayer path in the woods. And I sat in one of the many wooden chairs that were strategically tucked away on the path. 
Each chair held a different theme to direct a time of personal meditation and prayer and solitude. And a few of the 14 themes, it took me like two days to go through this prayer path, but a few of the 14 themes were courage and trust and hope. And I was sitting that particular morning in the chair of healing. And I looked up into the tree line and saw the bare limbs of the trees just gently swaying in the unforced rhythms of God's grace. It was so beautiful. It was so peaceful. And so many gospel stories of Jesus' healings, they flooded my mind as I pondered God's unsearchable understanding. And I sat in that healing chair and I prayed so many prayers for God's healing power. Prayers for many disciples in this beloved congregation. Prayers for our world in this pandemic. Prayers for my own family. Prayers for myself. And time passed as the cold chill of the morning rested upon me. <clears throat> and when I thought I had given it all to God, I tried to stand up. I tried to. <clears throat> but suddenly at that very moment, something very surreal happened. And I can't make this up. It was as if the hand of God's Spirit rested upon my shoulder and pushed me down in my chair as if God was saying, mm -mm, not yet. Not yet, child. And I just closed my eyes and I literally said out loud, okay, God. Minutes passed, I don't know how many. But in God's timing, the Spirit lifted my eyes up above those trees. And I got to see what God had prepared for me. For me. It was a beautiful red tail hawk flying right above, right above my head. And in those circle of seconds, Isaiah's words, they filled my heart. His words, the Lord does not faint or grow weary. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And tears just filled my eyes and all I could say was, thank you, Lord. Thank you for making me wait. The days are long, and our hearts indeed grow weary. And I want for you to remember that on any given day, our way is not hidden from the Lord. Our God meets us where we are, takes us by the hand, and lifts our eyes up to behold his almighty power, to heal and to strengthen and to renew us. And in doing so, the Spirit of God is at work to empower our lives with faith that gives our every day hope and meaning and purpose. And yet, even as we wait for the Lord's timing to be revealed, our most faithful response that we could give God is to claim His power. And I am telling you, I don't do it enough. But the most faithful response we can give to our Almighty God is to claim His power. Claim God's power to heal our weary bodies and hearts and minds. Claim God's power to strengthen us when we are faint and we don't know how we're going to go on. Claim God's power to renew and resurrect our lives, especially when it looks very impossible. Claim God's power in your life without apology, because the one who began a good work in you and in me will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. Right, church? Amen. 
Today, may our spirits be strengthened to follow Jesus' example. Let us set aside the chronological time in order for our spirits to be lifted up in God's life-renewing time. And may we encourage one another to lift our eyes and to wait for the Lord. Even as we create those spaces of grace to offer healing for each other. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Today, our affirmation of faith comes from the Heidelberg Catechism, from our book of confessions. The Heidelberg was written in 1562 in Heidelberg, Germany, and it was written to teach families um, <clears throat> what we believe in our Reformed tradition. There are actually 52 um, entries, one for each Sunday, to be lifted in worship, whether you are in the church or at home, for us to learn the amazing gift of faith. So I invite you to listen as I reaffirm our faith uh, for, for us. Christian, what is your only comfort in life and in death? that I am not my own, <clears throat> but I belong to God, body and soul, in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> I am so sorry. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood, and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation because I belong to him. Christ by his Holy Spirit assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. Amen. <coughs> I have been coughing for a month. I have had two COVID tests and I am not sick, but God will not let this cough leave me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anyway, it's about God, not me. Um, we have a number of prayer requests to share today as a community of faith. We do extend Christian sympathy <coughs> to the family of Maggie Parker, who entered the church triumphant on Friday, February the 5th. Um, visitation will be this Tuesday, February the 9th, from 1 to 2 p.m. at Burgess Funeral Home with a funeral following at 2 p.m. in the chapel at Burgess. So I encourage you to continue lifting up the family of sweet Maggie Parker. <coughs> Diane Harrell has been moved to rehab, so please keep her in prayer for the next steps of her journey of recovery. <clears throat> and we pray for Nate Baker, son of George and Mona Baker. So let us go to God in prayer. <coughs> Lord God, we praise you as the creator of the ends of the earth the one who does not, not grow faint or weary, the one whose understanding is unsearchable. Even as your people grow faint and weary, you search us out and meet us where we are. You lift up our eyes to behold your holy presence in mysterious ways. You promise to be our God as we are your people. Knowing that we belong to God, and to you alone, O oh Lord, it means everything. Lord God, we pray for the world that you so love and her weariness. 
Give power to the faint and strengthen the powerless. Restore the health of all of your children. Lord God, we pray for our nation and all of our elected leaders. Grant them your wisdom and discernment and all decision-making to seek the common good for your people. Lord God, we pray for those we have named today who need the assurance of your comforting presence. We pray for the family of Maggie Parker. Embrace them in their grief and lift their eyes to your resurrection promises. <clears throat> we pray for Diane Harrell. Strengthen her every step in her journey of healing. <coughs> we pray for Nate Baker. Surround him with your healing presence. And we lift our silent prayers that only you know, O oh Lord. Lord God, breathe new life into our spirits. Open our eyes to see you in the ordinary and even the unexpected places of life. Move our hearts to wait for you and to claim your power to do the impossible in our lives. Lord, we lean into a deeper trust of your sovereign power in saying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give thanks to God for the many blessings that we have received in the giving of our tithes, pledges, and offerings. You're invited to leave your financial gifts um, upon leaving the sanctuary or as always, you're welcome to mail them into the church or you're welcome to give online. But let us pray our prayer of dedication over these. Lord God, we praise you with thanksgiving. And we pray that you would use these gifts to spread your gospel near and far for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. We also pray your blessings upon all of our <clears throat> giving for Super Bowl of Caring, that they may benefit our sisters and brothers here in Lancaster County, and that we may have a significant impact of ending hunger um, for those who suffer from food insecurity. We lift all of this in your most holy name. Amen. with the bold assurance that through this gift of faith, our God is certainly able to do far more than we can ever hope, ask for, or imagine. And may the love of an amazing God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the deep embrace of Holy Spirit be with you this day in every single moment of your life. Amen. Amen.